It's a challenging market and, and we can't shy away from that and it's most challenging in our supermarket food business. But we continue to invest in areas for upside growth, so whether that's the growth of our convenience stores, which were up 6%, or the growth of our online grocery business, which is up 8%, and indeed our clothing and general merchandise business, which we've got 4% growth in the clothing business, which again grew its market share during the course of the year. It's fair to say, looking at your margins, that you're not passing on the full extent of price increases in food to customers. For how long can you carry on doing that? Honestly, couldn't tell you because there are so many moving parts. We know, um, you know the exchange rate has made a difference to, to prices. I think we've surprised ourselves by how good we've been at managing those input pressures, whether it's working with our suppliers or uh, reducing costs in our business. Uh, and of course, the other big factor that plays is, is the underlying commodity price. And if you look at something like petrol, post-Brexit, it went up by almost 15p a litre, and then the oil price fell. Uh, and so we saw that being passed back on to customers. And so as of today, it's about 10p a litre more expensive than it was this time last year. So it's putting pressure on household incomes, but nevertheless shows how these things can move around. So it went up, went down, and now it's somewhere, you know, somewhere in between where it was to start with. What about the relationship with suppliers right now? One of your rivals had a highly publicised row over the price of Marmite a few months ago. Are you fighting those sort of battles? Well, we never conduct supply negotiations in public, but it's fair to say we see our job as being the agent of our customers to make sure that we do everything we can uh, to mitigate cost price pressures in our suppliers supply chains and in our business and work with work with our suppliers to achieve that goal and our suppliers would rate their relationships with us very highly uh, and we seek to work constructively constructively with our suppliers to get the best outcome for, for for both sides of the supply chain clearly we're in the middle of an election period right now what do you and your hundreds of thousands of colleagues want to hear from the politicians well, we're an apolitical organisation, so we wouldn't comment specifically on the general election, but we've canvassed for many, many years about um, changing business rates or business taxation more generally. The UK market is one of the most developed online markets in the world, and um, that makes it a fantastic place to work and to adapt to that market change. But we would argue very strongly that the tax regime as it's currently structured um, is archaic. It's an analogue tax for a digital age, and we would urge any government, any party of any colour to look very closely at business taxation and at the burden of taxation carried by a business like Sainsbury's um, with a very large amount of property and a very large colleague base uh, because we think we are unfairly penalised uh, relative to some of our competition. Do you worry that those sort of messages are going to get drowned out by the Brexit debate? I don't know is, that, is a short answer to that question but we will continue to make sure that our voices are heard uh, and you'll often hear me make the case that I've just made. We are the seventh largest taxpayer in the UK with a 75th largest corporation and it does sometimes feel like you're fighting with one arm tied behind your back. Uh, and the other thing to remember about a business like Sainsbury's, um, you know, we're a UK based corporation, we employ 190,000 people in the UK and we have around 100,000 people who will rely on our success for their pensions. So, you know, it has wider societal implications um, and to give that up is, is uh, quite a concern for us. So it's important that the government looks at these things because it will have long-term ramifications, not just as far as our current employee base is concerned, but also the people who currently enjoy a pension with Sainsbury's.